So let's get into the word. Yes. Father, we just thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that it's powerful and effective. It will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. And Father, we thank you that your word has already gone out, Father, through this music and my brother's ministry, Father. But I thank you that we are also on course and on a mission, Father, to speak on the gifts of the Spirit. And we know that you want to release this in the body of Christ. And that you are about to do something in the church. I believe in these days, Father, that that is when the end will come. When this gospel has been preached into all the world, then the end will come. And Father, we are preparing. We are getting ready, Father, for a move of the Spirit, a move of God like never seen before in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last week we were talking about, uh, the week before we talked about the ministry or the, the, the helps ministries and all those gifts and also praise and worship. I failed to mention that praise and worship is also a part of the helps ministries because it brings us into the presence of God and it helps the church to sing and so on. But I also see it as a ministry because worship is ministering unto God and ministering to the Lord. So we were looking at the gifts of the Spirit and we talked about the, uh, the vocal gifts last week, tongues, interpretation and tongues of tongues and prophecy, which say something, those are the vocal gifts. And today we're going to go into the revelation gifts. And the revelation gifts, they reveal something. They reveal something in the spirit. They reveal something about your life. They reveal something about what God is about to do. Uh, maybe He's doing right now something He's going to do. And, uh, and it's also uh, when you take the word of wisdom and knowledge together, it brings prophecy. All right. So we see a lot of these uh, gifts operating in the church. And it's so important for us to realize this. And as I've been saying that the gifts of the Spirit are for every believer. Each one of you can operate in the gifts as it is necessary. I actually sometimes really believe when God is very serious about something He wants to say to a person or for direction in your life, then He sends someone with a word of wisdom and knowledge or prophecy or something to help you to, to grasp that and to give you clear direction. You see, God wants to give you clear direction. He doesn't want you to walk around always wondering, what's the purpose of God? What's the plan of God? What does He want to do with my life? God always wants to give you clear direction. And that's why He gave us these gifts, the gifts of, of, of revelation that reveals something. And it will reveal something to you for your future or maybe something that's happening in your life at the moment. So let's look at them first of all. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8. Where we were looking at the gifts of the Spirit. And the Bible says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit and to another knowledge through the same Spirit. So he talks about these two gifts. Word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. So let's start with the word of knowledge this morning. I'm kind of rushing a bit because I want to, uh, I know time is going. So word of knowledge. Okay, so reveal something in the present or something that happened in the past. The word of knowledge will always tell you about something or God will give you a word of knowledge for someone or concerning something about something that happened that's happening now or something that happened in the past many times you need this in counseling so that you can speak to a person and there's stuff that's hindering them and god gives you a word of uh, a word of knowledge so that you can know something that happened in their life or is busy happening or something that happened in the past so it helps you to it reveals to you the problem it reveals sometimes it reveals the root cause of of a problem you know, so it's important that we, we need to know this. And many times it's also there to show people that God is speaking. This is really the Lord speaking because how could this guy know this? Or how could this it's to give you kind of a, uh, um, you know, just a, a clarity that God is speaking to me. So it's very powerful. So I just wrote here, uh, uh, what is a word of knowledge by the Holy Spirit? It is a specific piece of information or knowledge that God reveals to you. This information is sometimes for the present time or the past that you did not know. So it's something you don't know as a person you didn't know it on your own. But God reveals this to you 
in a, a nutshell, this is information that can be for someone to, re, to in regard to healing, uh, a word of encouragement, and even a word of guidance. All right. Again, this is a, a revealed to you by God, and not previous known or information you came uh, to know yourself. All right. So it's something that you did not know. You, you did not know about it. It's not something that someone told you. It's something that God reveals to you without any previous knowledge of it. 2 Kings 6 verse 12. And the Bible says, 2 Kings 6 verse 12, None of us, my Lord the King, and this is where Elijah was, uh, the king of Aram came and they came against the kings of Israel and they wanted to defeat Israel and uh, plan attacks and wars against them. And every time Elijah the prophet would know exactly what the king is planning and he would tell it to the king of Israel and then the king of Aram got uh, frustrated because he could not understand how do they always know where the ambushes are, what their plan of attack was. And, and then the Bible says in 2 Kings 6 verse 12, none of us, because the king said, who is with the king of Israel? Who is telling him everything that's happening? And the Bible says, none of us, my lord the king said one of his officers but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom right. so he told the king of Israel the very words that he spoke in his bedroom so when he said things when he thought things the Elisha the prophet knew it and he heard that and God gave him a word of knowledge you see many times prophecy and many of the prophets operate in these gifts and then we think they're very wonderful prophets but they operate in the gift of word of wisdom and a word of knowledge it's all combined and then they they give that and then with that comes a prophetic word and all, all those things you know, so we see here uh, that the prophet saw and he knew exactly what the king was doing and planning in secret. And he revealed it to the king of Israel. And so that was a word of knowledge, something that happened uh, in the present and, uh, and so on. All right. And then John chapter 4 and verse 26. John chapter 4 and verse 26. Uh, 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 4 to 26. So it's about the woman at the well. You know the story. I'm just going to tell it quickly. This woman came to Jesus. She was, he was sitting at the, the well, Jacob's well, and he was busy uh, 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 just waiting there for his disciples. And this woman came to draw water. And as she drew water, he said, give me something to drink. And she says, how is it that you, a Jew, speak to me, a Samaritan, and all these things? And, and he said to her, go and call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And he says that you are telling the truth because you had five husbands and the one that you are staying with now is not your husband. So Jesus saw something in her life. He, he says, go and call your husband. She says, no, I don't have a husband. He says, you're telling the truth. So first of all, he knew what the story was before she even told him because he said, uh, it's true what you are saying. Because you had five husbands, so he saw something in her past, you had five husbands, and the one that you are staying with now is not your, is not your husband. You know, so um, he knew those things by the Spirit without him having previous knowledge of what was going on. He didn't know it before. It, it wasn't something that he came up with when he immediately in that moment, there was a knowing that this is the situation in this woman's life. It's also a word of knowledge. It's a knowing, you know. You know, it's sometimes as a person that must give this word of knowledge, you know by the Spirit that this is the truth. This is exactly how it should be or, or what is happening. I've had this many times in my life where I've ministered to people in ministry and I could tell them exactly that this and that and that. And when I speak to them, it's like there's an overwhelming knowing that I'm not wrong. And as soon as I start speaking to them, it's like their minds, their eyes goes like this or they stand there and they start nodding yes yes it's the truth it's true you know and tears start running and then you kind of just get boulders and you just speak more you know and then it just flows and when it starts flowing and that's what prophecy is is to speak for forth as the spirit gives utterance then you're just speaking and you start speaking and as you speak you get words and it just flows and and you start bringing the sentence i've even come to a place where i started rhyming wow. <laughs> you know because of the flow of that and then i will stand and say wow 
<laughs> Where does this come from? You know, and, and I must just keep my pose because now I'm the pastor, I'm the prophet. Uh, you know, I must uh, speak to them. You know, and but for myself, wow, where does this come from? You know, it just amazes you. So it's so powerful. So this woman saw what Jesus did and she said, Sir, but are you a prophet? You know, and, and I spoke on this once, uh, maybe I must do it again at some point, where this woman was so focused on her situation, so focused on her life, so focused on her problems. And she was saying, oh, there's going to come one and they were going to worship on this mountain or that mountain, as you Jews say. And she was so focused on the physical and the natural. But when Jesus came and He gave her, the, the, when the gift of word of knowledge was released, when He started moving and speaking by the Spirit, suddenly her mind shifted. And she shifted from the natural to the supernatural. You see, the gifts will bring you from the natural to the supernatural. It will bring you out of the natural life into the things of God. Into understanding. It will usher the presence of God upon a place. I've seen many times when I minister like this, people will start crying and sobbing and shaking. Even just by giving the word, I don't, would not even have to touch them. They will start crying and shaking and even fall under the power of God because of the word that is such a powerful thing. The Bible says, my word is sharper than a double-edged sword. It penetrates dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. You know, and when that word of wisdom and knowledge comes, it will penetrate dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and it will cut to the heart it will change a person's mind and life and heart you will not be the same after you've experienced that powerful anointing you know and you know when you're standing there and hearing that word you know that this is God speaking to me now you know and that's so powerful and some things like that is sometimes to have that touch that presence of God that touch with the anointing experiencing the presence of God is something that changes your life yeah, you uh, I, I heard a song a long time ago just one glimpse of his glory just one touch of his hand and I will never be the same because God's power is flowing through my veins now my voice is shut, but all right. Anyways, <laughs> you know, so just one glimpse of His glory, one touch, and God will change your life. That's why these gifts are so powerful. Yes. Imagine a person that is sick. We're going to get into that next week. A person that is sick, sitting the man by the, by the uh, temple, and Peter and John comes past and says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And they have an encounter with the Spirit, the gift of God, the gift of healing, the power of God. They have an encounter with that power. It changes his life. Yes. That man's life was changed because he could not walk and now he can. Yes. The blind man said, uh, once I was blind, but now I see. He changed his life. Let me tell you, an encounter with the Spirit of God changes your life. I can remember words spoken over my life. Like the one prophecy that went out over my life, he said, you will leave the 99. Many will run after the 99. But you will leave the 99 and go into the street and run after the one. And it's even the one that God touched. And I never even realized the, the significance of that scripture. And then the prophecy went on and he says, And you will, many will come and sit at your feet. And as my brother was speaking this morning over my wife and I, I remembered that prophecy. He said, and many shall come and sit at your feet, and many shall trust under your wings. And we were Eagle Wings Ministries when I started my ministry in Africa and so on. You know, and, and you know, uh, I went and I preached from the back of my bucky, and I realized later on that I left the 99. While everyone else was running after the 99, I went to the one in the street. And even if there was just one that gave their life, one that changed, one that was touched, that was the reason I went. And even today when we go out into the streets with this trailer, even if there's just one person, that's enough. The diesel in this truck was worth it. The effort to set it up was worth it. The effort to build it was worth it. If it's just one soul. Amen. 
He's so powerful. We were standing in Cryfontaine here, yeah, and I mustn't bring testimonies in, but we were standing in Cryfontaine there in the main road, and as we were preaching, there was one guy just sitting there on a wall, and he started looking at us while I was preaching. My dad helped me that day, and I was just preaching. And a lot of people were standing, and people in the shops and everywhere were listening. And afterwards, this guy comes and he says, listen, you guys touched me today. And he put a thousand rand in my dad's hand. <laughs> you know, and uh, I've had testimonies like that. Another woman comes out of the shop and she brings 200 rand. And not about the money. Yeah. It was the first time we actually received money for open ears. But they were so touched and that was how they could express it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But that's powerful. And that's what I love about it. But anyways, so um, uh, Jesus at the well, that woman we got that encounter with his presence and the word of God. And immediately her whole heart changed as he said, are you a prophet? And immediately she started talking about worship and she started about talking about spiritual things. They, you know, so many people, you, they come to church and they are there every year, every day, they're in church, but they never change. Yeah. But once the Spirit of God starts moving and the uh, gifts of the Spirit starts operating, they are changed in an instant. Amen. That's why we need the presence of God. We need the Spirit of God. Matthew 12 verse 22 Then was brought unto him one possessed by an evil spirit. So they brought this man to him. He was deaf and dumb. He could not speak. He could not see. And they brought him to Jesus and, and Jesus prayed for him and he got healed. He casted out the demon and the man could see. And the Bible says and the Pharisees started uh, speaking softly. Uh, verse 24 he says but when the Pharisees uh, uh, heard it they said this fellow do, do not cast out devils but by Beelzebub the prince of the devils and Jesus knew their thoughts yeah. Jesus knew what they were thinking yeah. let me tell you that a word of wisdom or word of knowledge you God will show you the thoughts that people are yes, thinking yes, yes. many times I will speak to people and as I speak to them I will know what they think and, <laughs> and I will answer them before they even answer me <laughs> you know so it's so powerful that Jesus knew what they were thinking. And He could come with, before they even said they were talking amongst themselves. He could start speaking. Many times when I preach, I will think this is what people are thinking. And then I will start speaking in a different direction. And many times the Holy Spirit will just take control. And I will speak about something else I didn't even plan on speaking. Because the Holy Spirit has directed me. This is what they are thinking. And then I'll speak. And I will speak right into the their hearts right into their lives right into their spirit and they will know that the spirit saw and the spirit knows what they are thinking so it's so powerful luke 19 verse 28 um, jesus and the donkey uh, luke 19 verse uh, 28 to 35 jesus uh, comes to bethany and he says to his disciples go to the go into the town and you will find a donkey tied there and bring you to loosen him and bring him to me. And if someone asks you, what are you, why are you untying the donkey? Tell them the Lord wants it. And the disciples went before Jesus and they got to that place just as he said. This is actually a word of wisdom. I'm going into that now where he's seeing something that's going to happen in the future. And he says to them, go to the, into the town and when you find this donkey. And as they went, they found it exactly as he said. They got the donkey there, uh, right in the uh, beginning of Bethany. And uh, they untied the donkey and the man came out of the house. And he said, why are you untying the donkey? And he said, the master needs it. And then they took it. He didn't even say anything else because by the Spirit he should have known. I believe that he also got a word from the Lord that said to him, Give it to those men because the Lord needs it. You know, and sometimes God will provide like that. Yes. Amen. Amen. So powerful. You know, when I was, um, I shared this testimony, I think in the uh, VIP the other night and with the guys that's been with me for a while. You know, when Rudey and I uh, uh, were. Uh, we were going out and then I went into Africa and I did mission work and so on and we kind of uh, we, we broke up and uh, I was in Africa and I came back and um, uh, we were there was a time in her life where she kind of we were just so at the end of of our relationship where we 
we broke up, but every time I came back, every time I came back and I won her back again, you know. Sometimes I'll put my foot on her and say, whatever, every place I put my foot, God gives into my hands. <laughs> you know, and, and all kinds of stuff that I saw with Pastor Few. And, uh, and I always confess, and she said, no, leave me alone. You know, and she didn't want anything to do with me anymore. And at some point, she kind of met someone, and she kind of felt that uh, maybe this is the one, you know. And uh, she went, and, and, and I saw this guy, and I thought to myself, well, maybe I must just let go now. You know, maybe we're not meant for one another. Maybe I must just let go. And then by that time, I, I came back, and I was traveling with a tent. And the one night, uh, I was sleeping with some friends there in, in, in uh, somewhere there in Stellenbosch. And, and, and as I woke up the night, or oh, I dreamt, I dreamt I saw her riding on a bicycle towards Somerset West and I thought to myself um, yeah and I was driving I just bought a BMW and I thought I'm gonna go in next to her and, and just say hi you know but then I realized that she uh, wouldn't rec recognize the car and I had the F250 Bucky that I did the open airs with and pulled the tent with which was left hand drive and I thought to myself in a dream I'm gonna go and fetch my Bucky and quickly come and then I can grab her by the hand and pull her all the way on the road to Somerset, you know, that's in my dream now, I see this. And um, as I did that, I went and I got the bucky, but it was just like, parked the car in the bucky and I'm next to it, you know, and you have to drive back all the way, but in the dream, I just parked the car and I was in the bucky and I went. Yeah. And I grabbed it, I said to her, listen, let me pull you there, and I grabbed her by the hand, and I started driving with her and I woke up. And I said, Lord, what's this dream? And just before that, I went to her and I spoke to her and I, we decided that, uh, you know, we're going to completely break up. Um, I'm not going to go to her anymore. I'm not going to bother anymore. I'm going to leave her and I'm going to move on and do what God has called me to do. By that point, we were busy planning on planting a church in Cirrus and so on. And I said to her, so I'm going to leave it now and I'm going to go. And that night, God gave, gave me this dream. And I thought to myself, Lord, but what does the dream mean? And as I thought about it, the word of the Lord came to me and he said, Do not leave her yet, but stick with her. Even though she's on her way, because this guy was in that area, she said, Even though she's on her way there, stick with her and see what I will do. And so I went, phoned her again. I said, Hey, listen, uh, I just feel like I, I can't let you go yet. Um, I'm not going to be in your way, nothing, but I just want to say that I'm still there. And uh, so on. And just a few weeks after that, my, uh, or a month or so after that, we planted the church and Sarah started. And then my younger sister passed away and Rude came there to be part of the funeral. And right in that time, we were, uh, uh, you know, we were sitting there and, and, and I wanted to kiss her. And every time I always wanted to kiss her, she pushes her, she pulls her cheek, gives me a cheek, you know. Yeah. And suddenly she just held her mouth and I kissed her on her mouth and I said, and now? And she said, I realize that I still love you, you know? And we came back together again. And if I would have lived there and forgotten about everything, but the word of God took me back to her. He said, do not leave her. Stay with her a little by a while longer. And if that didn't happen, we would not be here today. <laughs> Amen. So you see, God can give you a word of knowledge through a dream as well. We see Peter when he was uh, sitting, when he was on the roof praying, the Bible says they brought a whole, uh, he saw a blanket in a dream, in a vision, he saw a blanket with food on it because he was hungry and he wanted to eat, but there were all kinds of food and he said, Lord, but I can't eat this unclean. And the Lord said, do not call things unclean, which I call clean. And the next moment, uh, Nicodemus sent a uh, man to come to him and the angel spoke to him and men knocked on the door and they were there and the Lord said go with them and that was to a Greek man which was kind of unclean but because the Lord spoke to him he could go to his house and his, that man's whole family was saved and baptized that night and so powerful you see so God can sometimes give you a dream or word of knowledge to help you to 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 so that you make right decisions to help you. It can alter your future. It can alter things that should have gone wrong. God just brings it back into line again. So it's so powerful. Okay, so a word of wisdom. Let's look at a word of wisdom quickly. 
So a word of wisdom is something, tells you something about the future. A word of knowledge told you something about what's happening now and what happened in the past. But a word of wisdom will tell you something about the future. In, in Christianity, the word of wisdom is a spiritual gift listed in 1 Corinthians 12, 8. The function that this gift is given uh, varies. Some Christians see this gift as prophetic-like, so they see it as kind of prophetic, having a word of wisdom, seeing something in the future. Uh, others see it as a word of wisdom, a teaching function. So, but I believe it's both of that because I've experienced in my life many times God will give me a word of wisdom for someone, for something for their future. You must do this and that and that. I just feel this and that and that, you know. The other day my dad wanted to sell his house. And, and we were planning and we were talking about selling the house. And the day before he sold the house, he phoned me. He says, Trevor, this lady, this and that and that. And this is how much I want to give for the house. And immediately I knew by my spirit. He should not sell the house. And I was encouraging him, whatever. And I said, Dad, don't sell the house. I think just leave it. Don't do it. If they don't give you the full price of what you want, then leave it. And I was so urgent in my spirit. I was, there was such an urgency. And I told him and he decided he was not going to sell the house. And he eventually he didn't. So it worked out better. You know, so is that knowing uh, of something to give direction for someone for the future. But also, uh, it can be teaching. While you are teaching, many times you will speak and you will be, be teaching. And as you speak, you will say things that you did not plan on saying. And it's like God is just giving you wisdom or you get this revelation. A few months ago, I was speaking to a lady about certain things in the Bible. And she had certain things that she believed. And I knew that what she was saying kind of didn't add up that nicely and whatever. And as I was speaking to her, the Holy Spirit just reminded me of scriptures. And He bombarded me with word. And He just brought things to my attention. And as I spoke, it just came. It just flew out of my mouth and I just started saying things and afterwards I said wow that wasn't me that was God speaking you know and it's so powerful so we see this gift all right so then the Bible talks in Acts 21 verse 10 sorry I'm going a bit fast are you all right you still with me Acts 21 verse 10 the Bible talks about Agabus the prophet I think I mentioned him last time when we we're talking about the gifts uh, the, the man Philip had daughters that were prophesying and then the prophet Agabus came there and let's pick up in verse 10 it says after we had been there a number of days Acts 21 verse 10 and after we had been there for a number of days a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea coming over to us he took Paul uh, Paul's belt and tied his own hands and feet with it and said the Holy Spirit says in this way the Jews Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles so the Bible here comes the prophet and he's, he takes Paul's belt and he ties his hands with his belt and he says in this way they will take the owner of this belt and, and give him to the Gentiles, hand him over to the Gentiles. And exactly after that, Paul went to Rome and they captured him and they tied him and they took him prisoner in Rome where he was for the remainder of his life. You know, and Paul knew the end of his life. God spoke to him through this prophet, giving him this word of wisdom about his future. He will be tied like this. He talked about his future. The owner of this belt will be tied like this and handed over. So God gave him that word of wisdom for his future, for him to understand what was coming. You know, many times we always think everything must just be blessed and happy and so on. But sometimes God might lead you into something that's going to be difficult for a season. You know, and sometimes by a word of wisdom, God speaking into your life about something that you are about to enter, enter it gives you the grace and it gives you the ability to say, I am going to go through this because I have a word from the Lord. The Lord has revealed it. And Paul actually said, I'm even ready to die for the gospel. So he came to a place where he knew my season has come to an end. You know, and many times God will give these gifts. What I've realized as I was studying this again, 
is that it's so powerful because God will use these gifts to really give you direction in difficult times, yeah. in seasons where you might go into things, and even to encourage you and to build you up. You know, and for Paul, it was encouraging to know that God was going to take him to that place. And he knew by the Spirit, Paul already knew. There's so many things in the Bible where he talks about it. He already knew that this was for the glory of God. He was going to go it to them and the God's going to bring him before kings and before the Roman Empire and all these guys. And he's going to speak to them and tell them the gospel. His preaching was going to the next level. Amen. <laughs> and so many times we think the next level is, is going to be nice. But maybe the next level is a bit more difficult than the previous one was. So Paul could go into that knowing that God is with him. God has given it. These guys are not capturing him now and they're going to beat him. And what's going to happen to him? He knew. Yeah. Yeah. He knew. So he could go willingly and he could still keep his character. He could still be poised. He could still be a man of God. He could still walk in honor. He had no fear entering him. You see now the Spirit is speaking. There was no fear inside of him that brought any spirit or thing that released it in him. He knew he was confident in the Lord and he could go on and do that. He said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain." Amen. If we as Christians can just get to that place in our lives where we say for me to live is Christ it's going to mean Christ it's going to be a full sacrifice for Christ for me to live is Christ and to die is gain Amen in the arrows 2 Kings uh, 13 verse 18 we were just talking about the king of Aram that came against Israel and how Elijah saw the things and he said the king the things that you speak in your room Elijah knows it later on Elijah came to the king and he said to him uh, he talked to him about the arrows 2 Kings 13 verse 18 he said to him take the arrows he first he took a bow and he shot it through the window he said to the king take the arrow and sh sh uh, shoot through the window and he shot the arrow and he says this is how the Lord will go before you against your armies that are against your Aram and so on and he said to him took a, a bunch of arrows in your hand and strike the floor and here we see that manifestation again so he takes the arrows and he strikes it three times and the king says, why oh, did you, oh, the, the prophet Elijah says, why did you only strike it three times? Because now you're only going to win the battles for three times. You should have struck it five or six times. And then you would have won him uh, over completely. You would have defeated the king of Aram. So we see this manifestation. Sometimes it can be a right now and you carried it like that. God is saying, da 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 da, -da. You know, and God will give me a word from that. It will be like a manifestation. I don't know if it counts, but that's how I sometimes get it. You know? So, um, uh, I remember a while ago, uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was selling cars. And uh, we, we just finished, uh, I, I sold my transport business. And um, we, I started buying old cars and fixing them to try and get by while we're busy planting the church. Uh, in the tent makers ministry that I do, you know, and, and, and I was sitting on a little bench and, uh, and as I was sitting there, I was praying about the water shortage and I was praying and I said, Father, I thank you that uh, because I just started getting that song. Your ladder will be greater, your ladder will be greater than the rest, you know, and I started singing that song and as I was sitting on that little bench, I kind of felt the presence of the Lord and I said, Lord, I thank you that you're going to send rain and the latter rain that's coming is going to be better. And I felt, I thought God was speaking to me about the rain is going to be late, but it's going to come and we're going to see this drought lift and whatever. And as I was sitting there, suddenly I felt the presence of God come over me and the Lord said, no, I heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me and he said, no, your latter will be greater than the former. And I felt the presence of God and I, I grabbed onto that little bench that I was sitting on while I was waiting for the cars and for someone to buy a car or something. And I was in a place where I felt like, where am I? Yeah, I'm sitting trying to sell a car. This is not what I want to do. I want to work for the Lord. I want to do the ministry. I want to be preaching. And here I'm sitting and I sat there on the bench and I'm worried about the water and I'm worried about this. And the Lord said to me, no. 
your latter will be greater than the former. And I had to grab onto that bench because I felt like I wanted to fall back because of the anointing and the presence of God upon me. And I knew in that moment, my latter will be greater. A week later, Ruday and I went to a, to a, um, a, a prophet, a Benjamin Arday, and we went to his service. We said, Lord, just speak to us. And as I was sitting there, the, he walked past and he looked at me and he says, Sir, the Lord says the vehicle, the enemy has stolen from you. God says, I'm going to give it back. And uh, we've lost our first church because of a, a pastor or something. And, and, um, and, and the vehicle was stolen. And God says, I'm going to give it back to you. And he said, and sir, the Lord says, your latter will be greater than the former. Right. And he confirmed it. You know, so powerful. You know, and that's how God will speak to us sometimes. God wants to speak to you. Yes. God wants to. I, I believe God is speaking to us all the time. Yes. We just don't hear His voice. We are not set on the right frequency to hear what the Spirit is saying. God's speaking to us all the time. It's so powerful. Um, and then, you know, I also believe that with the with with this word of wisdom it's also when you are called before people or called before uh, where people want to um, like Paul and them in persecution and Stephen and Philip and Jesus when they were persecuted when the Jews came and brought them before the Sanhedrin and brought them before the Pharisees and they started questioning them and speaking to them the, the Bible says that the Lord said, do not worry about what you will say because I will give you the words in that moment. You know, and then He gives you that wisdom to speak that they could not even stand against what they were saying. And they had to recognize that they were with God. They were with Jesus. These are ordinary men, fishermen, and we must, they realize that they have been with Jesus. You know, there's just some few scriptures, James 1 verse 5. He says, ask for wisdom. If you need wisdom, ask God for wisdom and He will give it to you without finding fault. Yeah. You know, so you must ask, and I believe this is wisdom in normal life and situation, but also in the gift of wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom, supernatural wisdom in what I should do. And He will give it to you without finding fault. You know, and why He says without finding fault? Because God is not always looking like my brothers were saying this morning. He's not looking at your faults. Yeah. And if you ask for wisdom, it means that you are turning to Him. Yes. And there's something about turning to God first that touches His heart. Yes. There's something about turning to yes. God and saying, Lord, I need Your wisdom. Yes. I need yes. Your help. Yes. Show me what to do. Yes. Give me direction. Yes. And that touches the heart of God so much that He forgets about your faults. He doesn't even find yes. fault in you yes. because now you are righteous Come before on. Him because you love Him and you you placed him first amen you have faith in him Abraham was counted righteous because he had faith in God amen so powerful Luke 21 verse 15 for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your uh, uh, opponents will be able to withstand or contradict God will give you wisdom that your opponents will not be able to stand against you. Yes. Gabby is doing debate at school. God says, I will give you wisdom that they will not even stand against you. How does he say? Uh, will be able to withstand or contradict you. You will say something and they won't have words to answer you back. You know, and I believe that as young people, I know that Shantae and them are going through things like that in school where people always tell you something and then you must come back with something better, you know, and you kind of choke one another like that, you know, and God says, I will give you wisdom <laughs> that they will not be able to contradict you. If you say something, they will say, uh, uh, they will have bubbles, <laughs> you know. And, and I believe that that is what the Spirit of God will do. You know, when people come with the Word and come with things, God will give you wisdom, supernatural wisdom, and you will speak it forth. And you will even say, where did that come from? You know, and it will touch. Matthew 10, verse 18 to 20. He will give you what to say in persecution. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them uh, and the Gentiles when they deliver you over do not be anxious 
how you ought to be anxious of how you ought to speak or what you ought to say. For what you ought to say will be given to you that hour. For it, this is, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Amen. Wow. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 14, 15, 16, He talks about, I will send you the Helper, and He will guide you into all truth. He will teach you. He will show you what to say. He will bring to remembrance. Yes. It's so powerful. All right. Peter and John, as they spoke before the rulers and teachers in Jerusalem. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, Acts chapter 4 verse 13. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. They knew that they had been with Jesus. Now I'm going to skip that. Okay, last one. Discerning of spirits. We're going to get through them. You still alright? Yes. <laughs> okay, discerning of spirits. Um, I think this is also a very powerful gift uh, when we look at the discerning of spirits. Now, discerning of spirits, many times people think it's like you will see something in someone's face and, oh, they've got a spirit of bitterness and this one is, there's something about them that's not right, you know. It's kind of seeing those things, but it's not what it is. Discerning of spirits is actually to see into the spiritual realm, yes. to see the yes. spirit and not just this evil spirits but also angels and 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 stuff like that so you can see in the spiritual realm and see these things um, uh, like for instance 2 Kings 6 verse 16 uh, again Elijah and the king of Aram this king came and he, when he heard that Elijah uh, saw everything and he spoke everything that he thought in his room the king went and he said, sent out an army and he said go and get um, uh, Elijah bring that prophet to me go and capture him and they came and they surrounded uh, the, the, the Elijah and his servant you know the story and Elijah came out and his servant said Lord look we're surrounded and so on he saw the army he looked in the physical and Elijah said Lord open his eyes so that he can see and when he opened his eyes he saw the angel army surrounding them you know and God giving the angels command concerning them you know and that we can see that in the spirit that is the gift of discerning of spirits I haven't heard about a lot of people that seen this but this gift is also very important for us to realize in this situation fear could have come over them they could have been uh, shaken by this army surrounding them but God said open his eyes so that he can see and he saw and he saw the armies around them and, the, and uh, in that moment God struck the army with blindness they could not see and then God uh, uh, Elijah went to them and said no this is not where you should be follow me <laughs> and he took them right into the Gentile country and when they opened his eyes they were standing in the middle of the kingdom of Israel and, and the king was said must we kill them and Elijah said, no, give them food and send them back to where they come from. Yeah. You know, it's so powerful when you yeah. see these gifts in operation. The word of, uh, or this discerning of spirits is a powerful gift. Um, I, I once uh, stood, I, I've shared this testimony, I think many times before. I stood in Zambia and this lady stood there and she lifted up her hands. As I was preaching and I was prophesying, this lady lifted up her hands and she, she started screaming with her eyes so big she ran towards me and she came. Ah! And, and immediately by the Spirit I knew and I saw that thing. I just saw a glimpse of the spiritual realm around her and I knew that it was a distracting spirit. And that thing wanted to hinder what God was doing at that moment. But it's like suddenly. And I, and, I, and I saw her coming and I just sidestepped her and I said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And poof, and she fell on the floor. You know, and she was lying there. And, and all the guys in the church looked at me. And because they were so used to when a demon manifests, you must cast it out. You must do this. But I knew by the Spirit, this wanted to hinder what God was doing. You know, and so many times we will let the enemy hinder what God is doing. God is more important. What God is doing is more important, you know. And so I just said, I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I carried on ministering and carried on. And someone said, Pastor, but we must cast it. I said, leave her. She will, I will get to her later. 
And as I continued, she crawled, <laughs> she slipped like a snake into the next room and she just lied there, couldn't move because I bound her. Okay, and I just kept on ministering and prophesying and God was moving and people were falling and ministries were confirmed and people were healed and God did awesome things. And afterwards, I just went to her, I bent down by her ear. I said, in Jesus' name, come out. And she just started crying and the tears ran and I knew she was set free. You know, so it's so powerful. This gift can help you to discern a spirit sometimes, and then also to see angels, to see how God is moving, how God is on your side. Many times when you pray, you know, I've prayed many times. Once I walked into a place, and it was a, 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 a my cousin actually said to me, Trevor, you must come with me uh, to pray for this woman. And it was a, a, a in, she was a prostitute, and she worked at the brothel. And so he took me there. I said, no, I can't go in this. In there, I'm a pastor. He says, no, but please, come. And I felt, no, man, I can't do this. And the Holy Spirit said to me, go. I said, Lord, but how can I go in there? Well, if people see me, what are they going to say? He says, go. And I went in. And I, I, I went into the house up the stairs. Oh, no, first of all, into the brothel. And all the ladies were sitting there looking at me. <laughs> And I just said, uh, uh, I just stood there and I, I stood in the back. I'm always very good at just staying in the background, you know. And I just stood there and he spoke to her and eventually she came and we took her home. It looked even worse. So we took her home <laughs> and uh, we got to her house and, and he said to her and, and then she said, no, but we must come in. And I said, no, we, I can't go in. He says, please come. And so we went in and they, she started telling me that they have this one room and in this room, whenever they sleep in this room, it's like a, a demon comes and wants to have sex with them and stuff like that and, and rapes them or something like that, you know. And she started talking about that. She told me that thing and I said, oh, okay. I said, just give me a few minutes. And I, and she, because they, they stood at the door, they didn't want to come into the room. I stood in the room. I said, just give me a few minutes. Uh, I'll be with you now now and I closed the door but I slammed it shut like a teacher coming into the room after you've been naughty <laughs> <laughs> and I stood there in the room and I said Satan I come against you in the name of Jesus and I started seeing in the spirit all kinds of reactions 